In this video, we will be talking about the behavior of lossy dielectrics in various situations, including static, harmonic, and transient sorts of applied voltage conditions. And what we will see is that, in fact, all dielectrics are lossy, but how to best consider their properties depends on the details of the model. So to consider a lossy dielectric, the standard formulas, as it's shown here, relate the electric field to the current that flows through the material. And the current that flows through the material is a combination of the conductive effect and the dielectric effect. The conductive current flows in phase with the applied field according to conductivity times the electric field and the displacement dielectric current flows by I in imaginary terms, in complex number terms, according to the angular frequency applied times the dielectric constant times the electric field. So depending on the time scales involved or the frequencies involved, for a very small frequency, you will see that the conductivity is dominant and for a high frequency you'll see that the permittivity is dominant. And the specific formula that it, you can then pull out of this says that the complex permittivity is the real part plus I times the conductivity divided by the angular frequency of the voltage that's applied. This is in absolute terms, it's so normally one will also divide through by the permittivity of free space. On our website, we have a calculator which you can find in the support area. You can go to the support tab and go down to calculators and from there find a lossy dielectric calculator. This calculator simply implements the formulas that you were just looking at. So if we assume a frequency and we assume a dielectric constant and conductivity, then we can click on get parameters and it will tell us what the real part of the dielectric constant is and what the imaginary part is. It will also tell us what's called the loss tangent, the ratio of those two and the frequency at which for the given permittivity and conductivity they would be equal. So you can see for example for dielectric constant of 2 and a permittivity of 1e to the minus 7 that the frequency where they're equal to other is about 900 hertz. And if you were to invert that you would see that you would get some characteristic time for the system. In this case about two ten thousandths of a second is a characteristic time for where you're getting comparable dielectric and conductive effects happening. So what we will be doing in the course of this video is unwrapping this a little bit with different sorts of simulations. So if we look at this insulator that's shown, you can see that it's a simple geometry with caps on each end and sheds running down the middle and it's a, in a generic sense very much like insulators you see on power transmission lines and other similar situations all over the place. So the geometry should be very familiar looking. The model is set up right now to do permittivity and conductivity simulation at a frequency of 60 Hertz. And it's doing it based on material properties for the glass that's shown in green here. And those are 10 to the minus 14 for the conductivity and 4 for the permittivity. That is the relative permittivity. So if we put those numbers into the calculator, then what you can see is that the real part of the dielectric constant is of course 4 as is applied 
the imaginary part is about 3 times 10 to the minus 6. So for all practical purposes, you expect this to behave simply as a perfect insulator. So let's run the model and see what we get. And what we, have, what we will produce as standard outputs, we will look at a plot of the electric field contours on the left and voltage contours on the right. When we run the solver, you'll see that for static and phasor problems like this, we generally run the boundary element solver, and that's what you see in the run solver dialog sitting on the screen.